Voting on individual awards in sports can be a tough task as there is no universal checklist for determining the winner. As a result, the process can become rather subjective at times and the most deserving candidate is not always chosen for various reasons. Here are the biggest MVP snubs in NBA history. Carl Malone over Michael Jordan, 1996-97. If you still don't believe that voter fraud exists or plays a role in this award, we're going to hammer it home with this one. MJ had already won four league MVPs and did so unanimously the year before with the 96 award. Here's the differences between the season Jordan was unanimous MVP and then supposedly wasn't deserving of winning it the following year. In 97, MJ averaged 0.8 points and 0.7 rebounds less per game, shot 0.9% worse from the field, and averaged the same number of assists. His season-long numbers were nearly identical, so someone must have had an insane season to take the award from him, right? Well, that wasn't the case. Karl Malone had an impressive season, averaging 27.4 points, 9.9 rebounds, and 4.5 assists per game compared to Jordan's 29.6 points, 5.9 rebounds, and 4.3 assists per game. MJ's Bulls also won 69 games that year, and he had 18.3 win shares, which was more than Malone's 16.7. Jordan didn't do anything to give up his crown, and Malone didn't do enough to take it from him. Voters just wanted some change. Even though he finished with five career league MVPs, MJ was actually robbed of the award on three separate occasions. In addition to this one, he should have taken home the award in 90 and 93. Dave Cowens over Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 1972-73. This particular case provides us with our first example of what is called voter fatigue with the MVP award. It refers to people becoming tired of voting for the same candidate year after year and wanting someone else to have a turn winning the award. In 1973, Kareem was coming off back-to-back -back MVP wins in the previous two seasons, so even though he clearly was the most valuable player again that year, the voters decided to choose someone else instead. Dave Cowens put up respectable numbers that season by averaging 20.5 points, 16.2 rebounds, and 4.1 assists for the Boston Celtics. But these pale in comparison to Kareem's that year, as he averaged 30.2 points, 16.1 rebounds, and 5 assists. Abdul-Jabbar also shot 10% better from the field than Cowens did, so it wasn't about Kareem simply shooting more. The only real defense for choosing Cowens was that his Celtics won 68 games that season. Even then though, it wasn't like Kareem put up great numbers on a bad team, as his Bucks won 60 games that year. And when you look deeper at what each player meant to their team, Kareem had a far greater impact than Cowens. Abdul-Jabbar had 21.9 win shares, while Cowens only had 12. Other than people not wanting to vote for Kareem for a third straight season, there really isn't an explanation for him not winning the award. This wasn't the last time that voter fatigue would play a role in determining the MVP. Derrick Rose over LeBron James, 2010-11. Here's our second example of voter fatigue impacting the award. Just like Kareem in 73, LeBron was coming off back-to-back -back MVP wins in 2011. There have only been three instances where a player won the award three times in a row, and the voters were not about to allow King James to join that list. Instead, they chose to make Derrick Rose the youngest MVP in NBA history at just 22 years old. He did have a great third year in the league as he averaged 25 points, 4.1 rebounds, and 7.7 .7 assists per game. It's just that LeBron was statistically better than him in almost every single category that season. James led him in points, rebounds, blocks, steals, minutes, field goal percentage, effective field goal percentage, true shooting percentage, offensive win shares, defensive win shares, player efficiency rating, and net rating. The only things D. Rose was better at were his averaged 0.7 assists more per game, shot 0.02% better from three-point land, and made 9.9% more of his free throws. Other than voter fatigue, another potential explanation for the award going to Rose could involve the media coverage and public perception of LeBron that season. This was his first year with the Heat, so most people viewed him as a villain and expected him to succeed with his big three. There are plenty of times where LeBron was probably the most deserving candidate, but people got tired of him winning the award or simply didn't like him. Steve Nash over Kobe Bryant, 2005-06. As great of a career as Kobe had, he actually only won one MVP award, and it didn't come until his 12th season in the league. It should have happened two years earlier, though, in 2006. That season, Kobe was in his second year without Shaq, and expectations were low for the Lakers due to their roster lacking in talent. With guys such as Kwame Brown and Smush Parker, Bryant managed to lead them to the playoffs while averaging 35.4 points, 5.3 rebounds, and 4.5 assists. 
Those 35.4 points per game are ninth all time today, with Wilt taking five of the top six spots. One of the performances that helped Kobe reach that sky-high average that year was his legendary 81-point game against the Raptors. Steve Nash had a solid season, averaging 18.1 points and 10.5 assists per game, but it really wasn't anything special. The numbers Kobe put up to carry his team to the playoffs should have earned him his first MVP trophy. If you were to replace Kobe with Nash on that particular Lakers team, it's hard to imagine them still making the playoffs. Bill Russell over Wilt Chamberlain and Oscar Robertson, 1961-62 Without knowing Wilt or Oscar's stats from that season, you would think Russell was a deserving choice after averaging 18.9 points, 23.6 rebounds, and 4.5 assists per game. But once you hear the absurd numbers the other two candidates put up, you'll understand just how egregious of a snub this was. Wilt averaged 50.4 points and 25.7 rebounds per game that year. No, those are not from NBA 2K My Career on Rookie. Chamberlain somehow did that over the course of an entire season in the NBA. He also did it in an efficient manner as he was the only MVP candidate to shoot over 50% from the field that season. One would assume that season-long averages that will never be replicated would lead to an MVP trophy, but somehow, they didn't. Oscar Robertson had almost an equally as impressive season in his own right. The Big O became the first player to ever average a triple-double for an entire season, and he did so while averaging more than 30 points a night. That year, Robertson averaged 30.8 points, 12.5 rebounds, and 11.4 assists per game. What Robertson did was so special that another player didn't average a triple-double over a season for another 55 years. It's even crazier when you consider that he did it with over 30 points per game, too. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that Russell shouldn't have been MVP that season. Which of these snubs do you find to be the most egregious? Do you think the voters actually got any of these right? Are there any other examples that we should have included? Feel free to let us know your thoughts in the comments below.